It is no secret that today we have an absolute abundance of options when it comes to looking for an affordable condenser microphone. And today, we have no exception here with the TZ Audio Stellar X2 Vintage. Um, this is a affordable microphone, I wanna say in the $250 kind of area, um, close competitors with like your Rode and T1, um, you know, some of your perception um, range of AKG microphones and some of the uh, blue microphones as well. And so this is kind of right in that kind of same area. And the folks at TZ Audio were kind enough to send this over to me um, for my thoughts. Penny for your thoughts. Um, so we're going to dive into this um, as I am excited to check it out. So stay tuned for the video. So this is the box that this microphone comes in. Um, I do have to say, nice, solid, rugged construction. So kudos on that. Let's open up the box here though. See what we're looking at here. Um, okay, so first up here, it looks like we've got a little packet of, looks like a uh, QC sheet. And so just reading the little QC sheet here, we've got, your Stellar X2 vintage microphone has undergone extensive testing and inspection by our audio engineer at Tech Zone Audio Products Facility in Torrance, California. This testing was carried out in accordance with our strict quality control guidelines. And you can kind of see, we've got the date of inspection um, in here, and then the signature, um, as well as kind of the different things it was checked for, including a 14 hour burn in test, a polarization voltage test. Uh, frequency sweep, sensitivity, noise floor, visual inspection. Um, so uh, looks like it's all QC'd and ready to go. Uh, next in here, you've got your quick start guide with that kind of microphone basics. And then in here, it looks like a little about the microphone kind of section here. So um, this microphone is kind of modeled after the classic uh, Neumann U47. And then you do have the specs and frequency response down here as well. So um, notable specs um, in here, we've got a gold sputtered um, 35 millimeter U47 style capsule um, with the frequency range um, of 20 Hertz to 18 K. So it does have a roll off in the frequency response. I'll kind of put a picture up of this still so you guys can kind of see the image a little bit more clearly. Um, a sensitivity of negative 31 DB um, and a max uh, SPL of 130. So it does have a decent amount of headroom there. Equivalent self noise is 10 dB um, A weighted. And obviously since it's a condenser, it does have um, a requirement of 48 volts of phantom power. So uh, we're going to uh, throw this aside here because what you all wanna see is the microphone in here, of course. So, um, you have to say, nice little baggy here, branded baggy, nice touch. Um, but let's get into the microphone. So small, small little guy here. You can kind of see, um, you know, very much equivalent um, to some of the smaller microphones, like your Neumann kind of series of microphones, the TLMs, um, with that. So smaller kind of um, body, but it does have a very solid feel. I mean, this is pretty pretty rugged. Um, in fact, in comparison to like a comparable, like a Rode NT1, this is definitely, I would say just even in my hand, it feels a lot more sturdy and a lot more durable than a Rode for sure. Um, you can also even just see that where microphone plugs into the cable here, it just having really have a very industry grade steel build. So it's decently heavy. I mean, in comparison to like even some of your German made microphones like the Neumann um, range, it feels heavy uh, in the hand. It's not like a cheaper kind of material microphone. So really great kind of quality build um, in here. Very small, um, definitely a microphone that would be fairly easy to hide um, in, you know, any maybe a video that you're filming um, with that. So kind of low profile, super like that. Um, we'll see how it sounds in a second. Um, included with the microphone here too, we've got um, a shock mount. So we'll kind of be fitting that onto the stand when we do our audio tests here. 
nothing too spectacular about this. Um, and then we've got a windshield as well. So it doesn't come with a pop filter, but this kind of just goes onto the head of the microphone, just like so. If I can, <laughs> if I can get it on here. That kind of pops on like that. Struggles. Um, but yeah, so no pop shield, um, but it's better than nothing um, in that. I would definitely like, if I was going to pick up this microphone, I would definitely recommend um, you know, getting a, an additional pop shield um, with this. Um, SE makes a great pop filter. Um, it's both steel and kind of that pantyhose material. Um, so that's what I use on my microphones. Super great option there. I think it runs like 40 bucks, so it's cheaper than some of the other high-end metal uh, kind of pop filters, and it does an awesome job. Um, so let's hop into actually seeing what this microphone sounds like. Um, just for funsies, I'm going to um, pair it with a Rode NT1, um, just so you guys can get an idea of what it sounds like in comparison to another budget microphone. So let's hop into some audio samples. We are checking these two mics today. 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 So I don't know about you, but I was actually pleasantly surprised with what I was hearing from the Stellar. Um, it does have some reminiscent uh, U47 vibes um, in terms of the frequency response. They both have a little bit of that bump up in the upper mids, 4 to 5K. Um, with the Stellar, after that 4 to 5 um, bump, it does start kind of gradually kind of sloping down um, up until it reaches... Um, that kind of 20K area um, with that. It's, it's pretty much rolled off by the time it gets there. Um, whereas the 47, uh, the FET version of the 47, um, has another bump around 10K as well before it starts to slope off. So it's it's fairly reminiscent um, between the two. Um, whether or not it's uh, obviously fair to compare the two, just considering the huge price, uh, difference. Um, well, I'll leave that up to you. Now, this video isn't necessarily a shootout between the Stellar and the NT1, um, but I, I did want to include the road in here just to kind of give you guys a real world kind of example by an already very well-known microphone company that's been in the biz for a while. The Stellar is kind of new on the market, um, and so I wanted to get and give that kind of real world um, example um, that a lot of you guys watching this video might be familiar with already. Um, the Stellar does have a little bit more of that mid focus sound for sure. Um, that four and a you know, half, 5K kind of boost in there definitely gives it a little bit more of that presence in that kind of in those kind of upper mids. Whereas the road is kind of flat all the way up to around nine to 10 K. Uh, with that. So that should definitely factor in when you're trying to make a decision on what kind of microphone you should 
make a purchase on. Um, the other thing that I was hearing between these two microphones is the noise floor difference. Um, while I, I don't think that the noise floor on the Stellar was bad, it was 10 uh, dB of noise, um, that's definitely a whole lot higher than the Rode's four and a half dB uh, of noise floor um, with that. Um, I honestly think 10 dB for the Stellar is totally reasonable um, in there. Um, many great microphones have even higher noise floors, especially when you get into tube markets as well. Um, the Rode has always been known for a very, very low noise floor. So that's not something that you'll see in all condenser microphones. And so I think that 10 dB noise floor is perfectly acceptable on the Stellar. Um, that being said, um, if you are one of those people who is really, really um, serious about very, very noise-free recordings, um, that might be a factor if you want a ridiculously silent um, microphone. The Rode um, definitely is a very quiet mic. So hopefully some of these things um, have been helpful to you in this video. Um, as always, I would really appreciate it if you'd smash that like button, hit the subscribe, and, and turn on notifications on the bell. Uh, with that, please do leave a comment too and let me know some of your thoughts um, in the video. Would love to uh, keep the conversation kind of going. Um, but if nothing else, hopefully like you, it was kind of a new uh, eye-opener. I'd never heard of this microphone before um, as it's kind of new on the market. So um, maybe it was new for you, maybe not. Um, but thanks so much for watching the video and I will see you next time.